How's it going, Earl? Recommend Curse here. Uh, today's video, we are going to become the Mad Pumpkin Head. Uh, the reason why this uh, video came to me is because Rusty dropped the ranking every weapon video and showed me that I actually did not have a, one of the weapons. Uh, the Chain Link Flail. For some reason, it just never occurred to me that you could farm that weapon. But, uh, after watching this video, I went ahead and farmed it on New Game Plus 7, so I could officially have every weapon. But now, I know this weapon exists, I want to know, can you become Elden Lord as a Mad Pumpkin Head? We start off as Samurai, just because it has the best based arcane, but even based arcane is not great. And this weapon doesn't have a great drop rate. Especially when it's compared with Ruin Fragments for whatever reason. Um, but luckily with all the Knights, the Misbegun, and the Mad Pumpkin itself, we can actually use those runes to put into our base arcane. To help us get the uh, weapon to drop a little bit quicker. Yeah, still not there. Yeah, on your screen you can see that having such low arcane is not great. Um, it took us about an hour to get the weapon to drop. Um, would I recommend doing this? Sure, you can. But, it, it's a process. And there we are, we finally got it. Now, to avoid getting a second chain link flail, uh, we go and face the Mad Pumpkin on the Saints Bridge, because it can't drop the weapon. So that way we can get the helmet. Um, while doing this fight, I realized that if we ever get the pole arm hammer that the Mad Pumpkin has, uh, its unique Ash of War should be the head smash that it's doing right here. And it should get increased damage when wearing the Mad Pumpkin helmet. Just just free ideas for the DLC, even though at the time of this recording it's already been announced. But after many, about another hour or so, we finally get the pumpkin head to drop. Look at that. There's our warrior. Uh, we start by grabbing all the essentials, the tr Axe Talisman, the Spike Crack Tier, the Physic Flask, and the Strength Tier. We also pick up Golden Vow, Ashervor, and then we collect all the Smithing Stone 1s in Limgrave. We grab the Godric Soldier Ash uh, Spirit Ashes from Jellyfish Fields, as you can see it's a uh, quite a fun time and then we grab the wet knife and the wild strikes ash of war uh, it's a very good combo with this weapon and we will see that with margaret Come on, go hammer. There's hammer. Let's go. <laughs> Risk it for the biscuit. Oh. After that victory, I then decided to try and read some Pumpkin head lore. An oval helm, large enough to cover any head. A very heavy and very hard. 
reduces damage from headshots and impacts. Inside the helm is pitch black, keeping the crazed warrior within from panicking. Perhaps its rather roomy interior also helps alleviate feelings of pressure and claustrophobia. I highly doubt that, but okay. A spiked iron tube attached by a chain, wielded by mad pumpkin heads. Especially large for a flare. Wheeling it requires more strength than it does dexterity. Now, I know I'm no David Attenborough or Vadi, but hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? Alright. Wee, helicopter. Wee. Helicopter, helicopter. Just a little fun. You gotta, gotta entertain yourself, and the flail physics is <laughs> on par. Uh, we head to Castle Morn to collect all the smithing stone twos in the castle, and then I decided I wanted the grafted blade from the misbegotten. Ooh. Get it the red out of his eyes! Oh god! Oh my god, dude! No! I wasn't on the heel! Oh man. That's unfortunate. No, don't forget to. Yep. Oh. Pop, 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 pop. There we go. Now, with the grafted blade, as you see on your screen, we can get five levels in every stat for a minute. Um, very useful for strength, endurance, and um, arcane to proc all the bleed. But, our next little, I guess, side quest is we're going to go to the Zamar Warrior fight. Um, what he does is he drops the Scar Seal. Um, I know I can go to Kaelin to grab the Sword Seal, but I wanted to practice with this fight and I didn't want to be just over leveled to all heck. Also, I feel like it. With this fight, you can actually see his moveset for what it is. And he got me there. But we get him back with Wild Strikes. Um, but it seems like you don't fight these guys as often. And when you do, you're either overpowered or you just skip over the ruins. So I feel like I wanted to showcase this fight just to see. Uh, we head to Godric now. Um, ironically, we summon his soldiers to face against him but luckily for Godric he has a lot of punish windows and that is just perfect for the wild strike ash war and as you can see we're gonna proc him into phase two we get a juicy bleed proc before he breaks his arm and two charge attacks and that should be there it is the poise break I missed the critical for some reason, it just missed, and I got a little nervous, as you can see I'm a little spastic. Oh god, wait, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, there we are, alright, Godric down, whew! We then head to Kaelin to grab the other deck dust medallion, and finally the sword seal. We grab a gold foot, and then we solve Grail's age-old question of how stuck is she. Not much. We then head to <laughs> the lakes, grab the key, and then we head to the ruined precipice. This is the best place to get smithing stone fours. Uh, you can get all 12 in this area alone. So no need to go to Altus and get the bellberry. Oh, no. 
Speaking of Voltus, we go and see Gillica. Teach her a lesson. There we go. And we grab the Ritual Sword Talisman. It's going to increase our damage when we're at full health by 10%. Then we head to the Sealed Tunnel for the Bell Bearing, but also there are some Smithing Stone 5s here that we can use to push our damage just a little bit further without needing to get to the mountaintop giants for that bell bearing. And down here I decided to teach the Onyx Lord a lesson or two. And now we made it through the academy, we now go see Red Wolf who is a very glass cannon boss, so I don't foresee it being hard, but you never know. It is magic damage and we're only wearing a helmet. Uh, okay. Oh, come on. As you can see, he got us there oh, no. and there. Hey, let's go. As you can see, our Godric soldiers came in the clutch. Now, one interesting thing about the flail that I think is a very under underused battle strategy is that it can't be parried. So for Moongrum, who's Mr. Happy Parry, uh, I actually utilized it. We're not with time. We're going to beat up, break the spell. Do our little buff routine before she falls. And we just watch the wild strikes go to work. Just look at that damage. Oh. Alright. And kind of the same thing in phase two. Very unlucky that she actually got in her moon during this phase. I've never seen that. Yeah, I don't know how Renala went and iframed my attack without moving. Really? Alright, Renala down. Alright. <laughs> now, for some reason, I should have double checked my math here, but I thought that with all of our stats and the endurance that we'd be putting in, we would be pushed to light load. Well,. Unfortunately, that's not true. The helmet and the flail are so heavy that I think you would need about 40 endurance to even hit light load with only the helmet and flail. I don't know. I never, I never double checked it or tried to get into light load, but just saying that base endurance will not get you light load just with these two items. Anywho. We had to sell you a crystal tunnel where we can get a lot of smithing stone fives. And the boss here is ever so kindly to also reward us with five smithing stone sevens. Now even though Kaelid is a endgame sort of speak, it's not Dragon Barrow difficulty. And our flail does strike damage against a stone. So, as long as we don't die. We should have an easy time.
big charge. And there we are. Now, after just finishing one Falling Star Beast, we have the second one that's in Altus, which grants us six smithing stone, or a five smithing stone sixes. Man, numbers are hard, I swear. To get the last little bit of smithing stone sixes we need, we head back to Sealed Tunnel, and this abductor can break this statue at the bottom of the cavern, and that will net us a nine. Next. Draconic Tree Sentinel. Really? I didn't need my dodge? Hmm. Need some more sacred tears. Really? The fireball, eh? No! Leave him alone! Oh. Oh. oh shoot! Oh! Let's go! <laughs> We then head Ooh, that to scary. the Royal Capital, where we can get a few more smithing stone sixes and get grab the ritual shield talisman. And then we just head straight to Godfrey. Well, Golden Godfrey. He comes later. All that buffing and he just went into two shot. But when we can hit him, it's very much clean. Then that's us a talisman pouch. We then pay Patches a visit to grab the Margit Shackle. And from there we go straight to Morgoth and he feels the wrath of his own shackle. Don't know how that hit me. That's okay. Okay, on second thought, maybe... Second thought, maybe he's going to be a little bit tougher than I thought. But, we go ahead and grab Flame Grant Me Strength to help with the damage while he's down. But and then we also go ahead and grab the Gotra Great Rune, which is a permanent 5 in every stat. And it still didn't work. Just shows that all the buffs, you still gotta get good. Bah, 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 bah. Shackle. Bah, 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 bah. Don't get hit this time. Never mind.
And there we are. Heading into the mountaintops, we go ahead and bait this. I don't know. Golem to smack this particular statue, which nets us smithing stone sevens. We then grab smithing stone sevens by the first church america and realize that we never faced radon so let's go test our newly upgraded flail against him And look at that, we get a one cycle on Radon, just barely, but we got it. We then head down to Noxkella to face the Mimic tier. Go beat up a deer. Right now we, uh, we got to the mountaintops. Uh, we just beat the uh, we just beat the ancestral deer, and now we are heading to Loretta for Ronnie's questline, so we can get to Estelle and uh, Deep Root. And here is basically just the 30 seconds of how to complete Ronnie's quest. And now we fight the gargoyles. Probably my least favorite boss. And because of that poison move. And first one's down, now the second one appears. He uses his poison move, we're gonna try and tank it. And we miss. And he's down. Whew. Get your pumpkin head out of here. Get your ass out of here. Bop, 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 bop. There we go. Battle Let's of go. the Tinky Poise Boys. But now we can continue on to ah. Fort Citizen. And this is a bit of an annoying fight, mainly because of that homing lightning bolt because with wild strikes we can't exactly dodge it no way <sighs> really wow <laughs> Cancer. See, even past curse agrees. This fight was not fun <laughs> with the flail, but we finally get it. <sighs> One time greed actually works. Next, we head to Ansel River Main. 
we grab the miniature Ronnie doll and completely do a 180. We're like, you know what? I think I need a friend for this lovely, lovely adventure as a mad pumpkin. So we head to the catacombs where we face the watchdog duo. Uh, crystal darts make pretty good work of these guys. Um, I do like showcasing the power of these as annoying as we find the watchdogs. But that nets us the Mad Pumpkin Spirit Ash. Next is to upgrade them, which we have to go to a, another catacomb, which is a, another watchdog. And once again, crystal knives are your friends in these catacombs, or at least with this boss. And then that's us the Grave Bell Bearing. And we level him up to six. Next is the Giant Mountaintop Catacombs, where I guarantee you it's another watchdog, but also this the traps in this dungeon are I'm dead. <laughs> but we head into the boss room where it's a not a watchdog. Nah. Okay. And with that one defeated, we get a golden seed and another grave bell bearing. Good job. Now we continue our journey down Noxgala, where we fight Blyde. Did you use Blyde? Oh, wait. And we move on to Estelle. Still defeated, now we can grab the remaining smithing stone eights up in the altar. And with that, we head to Fire Giant, who may be an issue. Not entirely sure. We do have bleed, and we do have a very consistent attacking method. So far, so good. Big charged attack. I even summoned my boy to try and attack his hand to break his poise. But we go and hide in the inner thigh and just... Wild strike on it. Any second now. There it is. And that's Fire Giant down. Alright, now for prepping for Rykard, we grab the Winged Sword Talisman. We go ahead and face O'Neill, which then procs Gower to give us the Needle to give to Millicent. From there, Millicent says she needs an arm so she can help us in battle. 
we head to the Shaded Castle where we grab the Valkyrie prosthetic so that way she appears by the Godskin Apostle fight. We, we go ahead and defeat Millicent. I know, sad. But that gives us Millicent's prosthesis, which gives us consecutive attack bonus with plus five dexterity. Now we head to Fair Missoula, where we grab the last Smithing Stone 8 and the last Grave Bell Bearing. And then with that, we go and face Godskin Duo. Now, I thought going as a Pumpkinhead duo would be a good idea, but Black Flame is better than Flails. So, I broke down and went and got the Favors Cookbook, crafted up some Sleep Pots, did the buff routine, and just went Wild Strikes. As you can see, very effective, very effective. We then defeat Draconic Tree Sentinel and Malekith. Who Malekith? Malekith was he was a fight. Uh, having zero armor, his physical attacks really hurt. There's only a few instances where he actually tries to hit our head and that we actually get the damage negation. But as you can see right there, when <laughs> he uses Bishul Sling, it hurts. And there I was kind of dumb, just stood in a rock. But we get him to phase two, and lordy, lordy, I absolutely hated this fight as Pumpkinhead. I just, uh, for some reason, I just can't, I don't have Malakip down anymore. Like you see me cowering and running, and now I'm trying to get just any little buff. And there we get the perfect uppercut bleed proc. Next is Gideon. I don't I don't think there's anything much to say. He tries to heal through wild strikes. We <laughs> He actually got the heal off. But we bonk him. He falls. Now Horror Lou was an issue. Not, just not a fun time. So, I decided to <laughs> head to Volcano Manor, and with that, we do the back entrance and go and find Noble, which we're just going to utilize the same strategy, which is Sleep Pot, Buff, and Wild Strikes until he falls. Mm -hmm. 
Nearly a one shot. Nearly a one shot. Just keep rolling, 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 rolling. Now that we made it to Rikern, I decided to end stream here because I knew this was going to be a lot. Now, we go back to the mountaintops and we grab the Godskin Swaddling Cloth, which will heal us on successive attacks. We grab the Glint Blade Whetstone. So that way we can infuse our flail with frost, and now we just we just hope and pray. Took about an hour of tries, but we finally beat Reinhardt. The fight took about ten minutes, so I just wanted it to be over with. Next, we then go to Placidus X, and really, it's just get to the tail and wild strikes And with that final hit, we defeat Placidus X. Next is Commander Nile. His, uh, his uh, ghost buddies aren't exactly easy with no armor and no poise. But we go going ahead and bait this attack, get a jump attack, a follow up swing. And after his ultimate move, he punches over for a few seconds, which is the perfect follow-up for Wild Strikes. Yeah, it's a bit chilly out there. Well, I, I think I need some clothes to go out there. But we brave the winter and head to the Haley Tree where we give Loretta a piece of our mind. Okay, apparently Loretta gave a piece of her mind, but we get the victory. This is me thinking if this is a good idea. And no. And no again. Honestly, I'm just trying to do my best. Let me solar cosplay at this rate. Except for a jar, we have a pumpkin head. But after a few tries, we finally got the run. And let me tell you, it's something to watch.
went extraordinary second phase. Two onions and no waterfowl made for the perfect play. But next, we go to Moog. And that was Moog. Uh, wow, the power of the pumpkin destroyed the Omen brother. That that was insane. And we see Mikola. We will see him soon in June. But now we return to Godfrey with our newfound powers and a couple more levels from Melania and Moog. Let's see where it takes us. And wow strikes for the win again. Next is Radagon. Radagon is interesting. Because if he hits us, it hurts. <laughs> like normally. Um, but he has the unique ability to be frostbitten. Which wild strikes just completely takes care of him. Elden Beast, on the other hand, was something entirely different. On second thought, super easy, barely an inconvenience, as they say. Um, I thought he'd be a little bit more difficult, but as long as you can survive his barrage, honestly, Wild Strikes takes care of him. Even without the Frostbite or Bleed acting, he just can't handle the physical power of the Flail. And that's GG's. But if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit it with a like, cool. comment your favorite part, and then comment another character you would like to see me play in Elden Ring. Um, I want to try and do this up until the DLC drops, to which then we will just be all about Shadow of the Earth Tree. Um, it's, it's so wild that we are getting the DLC. But... My name's been Requiem Curse, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.